I mean, he is. Sometimes it gets to us all, and that's when everybody starts worrying about everybody else. But I wouldn't say that I worry about my dad. He's he's probably the strongest person that I've ever met, and even if he does, even if something, you know, even if he does get really depressed or fall in a hole or whatever, he has us to bring him up, and I don't think anything, I mean, I don't think, it, I think he should be, I think he'll be okay, I really do. He's like, he's the foundation of the family, he's too strong. Oh, I love Dad so much. I just, I don't know. Um, he's the one who's always been there for me. You know, Martha and I sometimes, I don't know, we kind of feel like, oh, you know, this person, all my friends have their mothers and fathers and what's going on. And then I'd be like, wait a second, you know, I have Dad. You know, that's better than anybody else because my friends would come and they'd all be like, your dad is so cool whenever they came over. I mean, even when I was in elementary school and middle school, it was always, wow, Mr. Peterson's so cool. And, um, you know, he was the, he was the, the yes kind of dad who was like, oh, okay, that's fine. I don't see a problem with it. You know, um, I just, I mean, obviously growing up, I went through a period where I was very much, not against my parents, but it was one of those things like, God, I don't understand them. And I, you know, I get really upset and mad. I think they were, you know, not being nice to me or something like that. But um, from hindsight, growing up, dad was an amazing father. And I, I always knew it too. I don't know. We've I'm, As I've grown older, we've had a better relationship and I think that's kind of grown from him telling me stories about my birth mother and my birth father and just the way he's an amazing parent, you know, and how he always looks out for Martha and myself. And he was part of site-based management and, you know, PTA kind of stuff. He, you know, was always involved, always knew my teachers. Um, he was just a really great dad. I don't know. <laughs> that's why I call him super dad. <laughs> Todd took me um, on a ride. He was like, do you want to, I have something to tell you, come with me. Um, and so we rode to uh, the Forest Hills Park in the car and he was like, I have something to tell you. And um, he was like, well, um, I've known for a little bit and Uncle Bill's known for a long time, but um, dad's bisexual. and." I was I was really shocked and so at the time but um and then I was like, oh, okay, well um then that explains that I've seen like sometimes I would go um into the the den the study and you know, I'd sometimes see pornography printed off, male pornography and I actually I never thought about it. I was like, Okay, <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of bizarre but um I never really thought about it at all and then kind of put it together and I realized that I wasn't really surprised and so Todd was, I mean, I, I was just like, okay, that's that's all right, I understand, I'm not really surprised and Todd was just like, <laughs> he was really um, taken aback, but so, and then we came home and I think everybody else had known by then and so we were just talking about it. Um, and I remember, I remember Caitlin had known already and she was just, she was kind of laughing and she was like, isn't that weird or something like that? And, um, everybody was just kind of, I mean, nobody was, not that I could tell, nobody was really upset by it, but everybody was just kind of, it was like dad had had this secret part of his life that we had nothing, we knew nothing about and I don't care. You know, that doesn't make him have loved mom any less. That doesn't mean that he cheated on mom ever. You know, it just, 
all it means is that he has a different sexual preference than, you know, me or Todd or anyone else. It just, I mean, I have so many gay friends, uh, especially in New Orleans, you know, it's just, it's something I've grown up with. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I almost was like, oh, okay, well, that makes him a more interesting person. You know, it wasn't one of, I never judged that. I didn't, I just don't care. It's no big deal. So when I'm sitting in court, it's just so stupid. I mean, I just can't comprehend how people can be so close-minded. And you know, oh no, he had pornography. Uh, you could walk down Bourbon Street any single day and see all of that stuff, you know? It's just, I, I just get so frustrated with how close-minded people are. I just feel like it's a natural part of life, you know? I mean, people are allowed to choose, they're allowed to be whatever they want to be and do whatever they want. I mean, we are in America. <laughs> I, I thought that's what we stood for, but I guess not from what I see in court every day. So... I don't know. It, I, it doesn't need to be in court, and it can definitely change people's views. And I think it's just a cheap card that the prosecution can play to try and get people on their side. It's it's useless. I mean, it's just it's wrong, and it's mean. And they're going to open up to the whole public, since they already have that dad's bisexual. And, you know, it's it doesn't need to happen. There's people who have too many horrible views, and people who... I mean, there's been horrible phone calls about dad being gay and about, like, him being a whole, uh, just, I mean, horrible, horrible hate. Just people are very against it, and I don't know. It's just unnecessary. I get so furious, especially when I'm sitting in court. I'll just sit there and get so mad, and I'll just, you know with all those people sitting to my right, you know, and they're thinking this, and then, you know, the cops are lying about this, and it's so obvious they're lying because they're not even matching up in their testimonies, they're lying, they're changing things from their other testimonies, and it's so obvious. I just feel like to anybody that they're lying. And, I mean, I can't trust, like, I don't trust the press whatsoever, especially not after yesterday. Oh, God, no, I don't trust them. I, I don't trust the judicial judicial system. I, I don't trust anyone, you know, in Durham of authority. It's just, and so I'll sit there and I'll just, you know, you have to keep a straight face and, you know, don't show any emotions. And, um, and I realize that if I'm going to get angry, it'll just prove that they're getting to me, you know? I mean, it's kind of an elementary thought, but at the same time, why should I waste my time being angry? You know, it just doesn't make any sense. I'd rather just be there for dad and the family. I have no respect for it anymore. I really, I just can't, I can't respect something that you go into every day and just have my dad abused, like verbally abused, like just, it's a nightmare every time we have to walk in court. And it's being let happen. And the fact that nobody's stopped it so far and that it's gone all the way to this extent and nobody has even brought up any doubt, it seems like, in the courtroom that... I just, I hope to God that somehow... I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I'm almost positive. I mean, I'm, I'm positive <laughs> that my dad will be found in be found innocent, but um, that's only because of the jurors. But if the judicial system was left to go without the jurors, I just would have no hope at all, at all.